live from San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Hadoop Summit 2016, brought to you by Hortonworks. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley in San Jose for Hadoop Summit 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signals from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host George Gilbert, big data analyst at wikibon.com, part of SiliconANGLE Media. Our next guest is Praveen Kanakaria, CEO of Impetus Technologies, and AJ Anand, VP of Product Management and Marketing at Kivos Insights. All one big happy family. Guys, welcome back to The Cube. Great to see you. We talked last year. Welcome back. Thank you. Good to be here. So I love talking to you guys because you got the you're out in front of customers doing some all this great work, and you got the product side here. You guys are on the front line. So the first question I really want to dig into is, and you know, we talked last year, it, it's a year later. What's changed? Is Hadoop moving the needle? Is it inch by inch, and then hopefully the long gain, or is it gaining at all? Praveen, your thoughts on customers with, with their with their sentiment towards the Hadoop and the Hadoop ecosystem? So you know there are those. There's a small minority of haves, and these are the people who have really recognized and seized the opportunity, uh, and they've really benefited. You know, we have our largest customer, and I talked about them last year as well. They have got 130 use cases in production. They are rolling out the third version of their data lake. Uh, with full, massively sophisticated governance infrastructure, which the industry doesn't offer. They've built it themselves, stitched it themselves. Uh, they've filed patents, they're not a technology company. And, uh, and then I see a lot of other large companies uh, where there's still waiting going on. They're waiting for each other inside. And the Product opportunity. Product question, culture opportunity, question? It's, I think it's a culture question. It's. Uh, the, the deluge of offerings has further contributed to this paralysis, if you will. Yeah, but Spark is booming, cloud is on fire. We've seen the cloud guys are winning. Amazon continues to you know, be the gift that keeps on giving to the industry. Their revenues are up. They're getting more and more services. Seeing Google, Azure, those clouds are developing nicely. So cloud, is, is, and with Docker containers, you're seeing huge application development driving significant, accelerated, multiple, multiple, X multiple of benefits. Much, much faster from time to value. So, you know, what, what we've seen is, you know, you talked about adoption of big data, adoption of uh, We've seen a lot of companies can embark on that strategy and get to a certain point and then things languish. And, and the, the, what uh, what we see as you know some of the biggest inhibitors to getting them to to the next step is uh, you know getting that data usable and useful and accessible by the business users. Unless there's adoption by the business users, the cloud strategy or the big data strategy is not going to be successful, right? So that's really where we come in, right? We enable a business user to become use, useful uh, on the cloud or on the big data platform. Uh, because once you've moved your data there, uh, the business user needs to be able to interact with it and explore it, you know, without having to go through a learning curve or uh, wait for their data. So the, the inhibitor is really the complexity, the lack of responsiveness, the slowness of the environment, right? Uh, by bringing Kaivos Insights you know, into the solution, what happens is for a business user, now he can interact with that data using his tools that he's always been using, Excel or Tableau or MicroStrategy or whatever he's most comfortable with, and now he can interact with data at any scale and get the response right away. So right? I got to ask you guys a question. This brings up a good point. We hear this all the time, and, I, and I've been trying to piece it together on every Cube uh, show I go on. Infrastructure as code really was the DevOp, DevOps ethos. Make application developers program the infrastructure so they don't, have, they don't have to do the provisioning, open up ports, do the load balancing, all the networking stuff, pain in the butt for them, all that operational stuff that was a different team. Now DevOps has become mainstream, we see Docker containers, ops is changing, so that game is won. But the same concept could be applied to data. There, there is, in a way, a data as code kind of concept going on where I just want the data access as a fabric or just as a layer. Right. Are you guys seeing that trend? I mean, it might be a little early, but I'm kind of trying to tease it out because the same developer challenge is there. Hey, I need data, but I don't even want to be a data jockey right. to do all the data. 
Yeah, so, so big data was, you know, initially started off just being for the data scientist. You know, somebody who could dive in there and write code and, and, and develop, you know, algorithms to analyze that data. Uh, but you need to get it beyond that point where a business user, you know, they, they can access it and get value out of it without having to go to an IT person and say, okay, this is the report I want and come back to me in a couple of days when, when you've got the report created. You need to get out of that mode. It's got to become more self-service, right? So the blog post that I'm thinking about writing in my head right now as we're talking, Praveen, I want to get your thoughts on it because we could probably write this right now. Um, headline is, The Silent Pivot. And my theme here is, is this industry going through kind of a silent pivot? I mean, we've heard Arun Murthy say in theCUBE, the ecosystem is no longer just about Hadoop. All these guys out there, combined revenues aren't that massive, so it's still relevant. So of course it's relevant. But the question is, they're all trying to find their next thing. So is there, is there a silent pivot going on where they're quietly not pivoting in the sense of, well, we're out of money, I got to pivot to a new thing, kind of like, or is this just a shift in strategy? Do you see, how do you see the industry? I mean, is it pivoting, is it turning, is it adjusting its course? What's your thoughts on you know, so, the original Hadoop ecosystem, where it was just a few years ago, and then where it's going? So one thing Ajay said you know, uh, is allowing data to be consumed very easily and naturally by your business lines, uh, that's been a challenge. And even with the Hadoop ecosystem, that's been a challenge. You know, if security is still broken, you go look at some of the major Hadoop vendors and their security infrastructure is still in beta, not to be used in production, there are those disclaimers. And everybody's in production with that stuff. So that's been a challenge, but uh, I think if one can solve it, and like we have solved at Kaibos, is allow data to be quickly and easily uh, accessed by people, by the analysts sitting in various corners, various work groups, uh, and if they can do things very quickly, then the power is immense. You brought all your corporate data in one place, this opportunity did not exist earlier, and you got all the unstructured data in place, and, and if you have the governance uh, in structure, security and governance structure, to make this data consumable by anybody and everybody, you know. So the people behind us this year, going back even just a few years ago, we saw just a few years ago, venture-backed companies were data wranglers as a service. All these kind of uh, companies, the ones that are left standing and these new ones have kind of appeared, and there's some big players here, you know, Microsoft, HP and others, IBM, are they pivoting? I mean, are, are they the same? In, I mean, do you see them pivoting? Or is there a pivot? Is, am I off base so, on that? So an, an, another pivot is the clouds turning into the big data lake that this industry in this room has been aspiring for. So, what Amazon, do you mean by that? Amazon S3 is a place where people are just putting all their data in. And, and we're seeing this across a lot of enterprises where, all right, let's get all, all our data into S3. We cannot figure out our internal infrastructure. Let's bypass it, get all the data in one place, and then we'll figure out how to consume it from there. But at least it's in one place. That getting all the data in one place alone is a massive, massive challenge for large enterprises. Is that Hadoop or just data in general? Uh, data in general. And I don't think, uh, I think people have become, uh, uh, risen to the level of maturity where they don't think it necessarily has to be Hadoop. They'll pick and choose, or certain pieces from this stack will show up there. You know, we're being asked to support Spark application on S3 directly. Uh, so this begs the next question, if that's the case, if people are saying, okay, hey, support S3 and have all <coughs> Amazon, for instance, that begs the question that tooling should be open. So in, in essence, the right. tooling or analytics exactly. is pick your tool. Market. So, so that's, that's what our customer is asking for. A very large financial industry uh, customer is um, you know, deploying us on premise right now, but they know they're going to go to S3 and Amazon in a few months. So they want to make sure that the solution they deploy, is, you know, it, it makes no difference. That they, they can deploy the same solution as they move to the cloud and they're... Are they saying, well, maybe someday, are they actually asking you to write in the contract? No, this is in the contract. You know, they, they need... As they, an SLA. Yeah. yeah by they, fall of this year. And the yes. POC happened on both infrastructures. Internally so, okay. and so on the cloud. So customers are, are <coughs> writing into the contracts with yeah. SLA to have the ability to and or move data, yeah. all the data to Amazon, yes. S3. Yes. 
And the impact to the customer and, and, and is our, our system working flawlessly there as well. That's not great. I, well, that assumes you're building some sort of intelligence layer in front. So, okay, so the, why is the customer doing that? What's the reasons, what's the impact of them? Cost, agility, um, options for the future, multitude of tools, all the above? <coughs> I think agility is big, cost is the second one, and I think time to market. Time to market, in my opinion, is the biggest. Yeah. So, so, are they picking a tool set, or are they just going to have their own, you know, bring your own tool to work kind of thing going on? You know, well, so they kind of, Right, so they're building out their stack of tools, right, for the infrastructure, right? And as they look out, they're actually looking at five years out, you know, the 2020 architecture, and they've already kind of started mapping in the layers. And they're positioning us as kind of the BI consumption layer of that right. infrastructure, right? So which is great for us to be, you know, considered in, in those terms. Uh, so, you know, for us, I think it make, makes a lot of sense to be, you know, uh, be able to support different environments and be an, uh, a solution that, you know, both their business users benefit from and their IT guys are not scared of, right? So they, they can, as you've got, the solution being deployed, not just by a few users that are experts on Hadoop, but by potentially thousands of users in the enterprise, now you've got to be able to take care of, you know, can you scale to deal with thousands of users? Do you have the security to deal with, you know, allowing anybody to access your data? So we have to take care of all of that, you know, the, the scalability as well as, you know, providing that level of security assurance that, you know, a, a sales guy from that region can only see his region's data and nothing else, right? So having that fine-grained control. Uh, over their data. So, so you don't have a physical division of data marts, so, you know, where companies had 20, 50, 100, 200 data marts. Now, you only have one data mart. There's only one place where all the enterprise data But is. what about the use case where they might have data out in, the, out in the network, or other networks? Could be IOT, so there might be little, I won't say little data marts, but like, okay, centralize the data just so you can build your interface for tools, but what about the use case they have other data? Are they going to move it across the network, or do you see kind of a tiered approach, or I think we'll what's your thoughts? We'll see all of the above. Tiered approach, you know, some degree of federation, uh, and also moving up some data, process data being moved to the central data lake source. Sorry. Uh, um, I keyed off something, I actually wanted to ask something um, that John asked, which was HDFS was this repository for Hadoop-based processing engines. But it sounds like customers are saying, I put all my data in S3 as the physical repository for any engine, not just Hadoop. And if I want to do some transaction processing, I might move it elsewhere. Um, if I want to put it in a fancy analytic pipeline that includes non-Hadoop engines, I'll put it there. Is that is that what it's becoming, like the, the bottom-most data layer? So, we're seeing both. You know, we have one large customer uh, whose system of record is now HDFS, which is a huge elevation for HDFS in their context. Uh, and then we're seeing others, you know, one other big one with that Ajay pointed to. Uh, and they are actually moving everything into S3. So now whether the data lake, the data in S3 will be a system of record, I don't think so. But definitely that's the meeting place for data coming from all directions. Okay, I got to ask you guys, with our limited time we have left, I want to yeah. get down to the customer conversations. Mm -hmm. You know I always ask this question. I want to find out what's trending in the customer conversations you're having. So whether you want to visualize a word cloud or stack rank set of conversations, what are the top three or four or five conversations you're having with customers, material conversations that you think would be notable to share around one, one their needs and what you guys are doing with them, just in general that might be interesting for folks to know about? So, you know, there's a variety of things. You know, people are looking for, you know, maturity and something that they can depend on in terms of the deployment. That That is a, is a key component of the decision-making process. So this is something that we can rely on for our enterprise. You know, so it's, it's kind of uh, moved away from, you know, Hadoop being, it's, it's new in the game, it's early on, we put up with whatever, you know, uh, kinks it's got. Now they're looking for something solid that they can deploy on, right? So that, that's- They want reliability, major. they want rock size. 
enterprise yeah. creating all the, enterprise all the traditional yeah. enterprise you know, capabilities. And how about application development? Any action going on there? Certainly, Docker containers has been very popular. It brings more interoperability. Is that impacting any of your conversations? So the flexibility, right? The flexibility to be able to provision, uh, you know, resources as you need it, and then, you know, remove them when you don't need it. You know, that, yeah, that's I mean, it basically kind of accelerates the, the yeah, DevOps. Absolutely. You know, so you, you don't have to wait for, you know, a Hadoop cluster to be provisioned. You know. When I was at Yahoo, it would take three months to get yeah. a new cluster provision. <laughs> now you can do it in minutes. minutes right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, remember those good old days, racking a stack? Yeah. You guys are out at lunch. Hey, where's the pager? What's this pager number? Yeah. Those were glory and, days. And security is a third one, a big one. Uh, it's not very sexy, but... No, you know, it's relevant. Is, it's, it's very relevant, and with the increased usage in... Lot you guys seeing ransomware out there? A lot of ransomware and customer base? Is that mostly niche industries like healthcare? No, we're not seeing. You're not seeing much. No. What about the um, um, the DevOps winning concepts? How mainstream is DevOps now in your mind? And and, and what's the impact to operations? Because ops and dev would be always at odds. Um, with DevOps kind of winning the mind share of agile, that's putting pressure on ops. What's your take on the level of progress with DevOps going we're, mainstream? We're believers because it just produces agility and time to market. You know, yeah. one's not waiting on the other, there's no finger pointing, so we just love it. Okay, final worry, what's going on with the company? Give us a quick update. Well, we just introduced a new version of the product. Uh, you know, bigger, better, faster, but but also more secure, enterprise ready, and we've got some really exciting customer wins that uh, you know you're going to be hearing more about. Do you mean any any updates from you? No, we're just uh, piggybacking on what uh, Ajay said. I think you know, I'm his customer wins are turning into requests for investments, and and I'm trying to deal with them. So <laughs> stay it's private. Very exciting. Stay private. Stay self-funded. <laughs> like the cube, self-funded is a good thing. But it's all you know. You're across the threshold. So congratulations. Thank thanks you, for John. your insight, guys. Really, thanks for sharing the customer perspective and your success, and really where all the action is out in the marketplace. We are here in the cube, breaking down all the action, kind of where the relevance is, enterprise grade. Here in the cube, AJ and. Praveen breaking it down for us. I'm John Furrier with George Gilbert. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with more. You're watching theCUBE.